Well, you know, there are, one of the things the book says is that the consistent threads through all the booms are a lot of optimism, a low level of risk aversion, and a lot of money chasing deals. And I think we have most of those things now. When a lot of money tries to enter a market, there's an auction that takes place, and when the auction gets heated, the prospective returns go down and the risk goes up, and some of that has been taking place in the credit markets. Where in the credit markets, I mean, are you talking about the billions of dollars in emerging market debt? Are you, I mean, what sorts of credits are you concerned about? And we've who seen, holds them? Well, we've seen it in all, in all the credit markets, public and private, mm -hmm. U.S. and foreign. And you mentioned the emerging markets. In, in 2017, uh, our Argentina, which has a terrible credit record, was able to issue 100-year bonds. People loan money to Argentina for 100 years. And... Uh, you know, that was because they were optimistic at the time. They were able to, willing to grant that things would go well. Today, not so much. The, down, the bonds are down 15% in just over a year. What triggers the trouble, Howard? I mean, we were just listening to Jay Powell, and Jay Powell was saying that he believes in a gradual uh, rate path when it comes to hiking rates. But, you know, there is some investor belief that, that the Fed could overshoot. Does that overshooting, does the Fed's path then overlay with this other problem and, and spark that crisis? Well, you know, we never know for sure what's going to be the problem. We can enumerate some possibilities. That's one of them. The, the interest rate tightening overshoots. The uh, contractionary monetary actions of the Fed are excessive. They cool the economy too much. On the other hand, the, you know, the, the tax cut uh, and stimulative measures kick in and the, and the economy overheats and we get too much inflation. Uh, requiring them to raise interest even more. The higher uh, interest rates start to bind on companies that are highly levered and not prepared uh, to, to cover a high interest payment. So there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, ringing the bell to say that we're, we're approaching an end. It's just that on the one hand, there are the opportunities that you allude to, and on the other hand, uh, you know, markets are rather high in their cycle. Valuations are somewhat stretched. And, uh, and uh, I just believe this is a time for caution. You know, uh, Howard, the, the title of your book is Mastering the Market Cycle. And if you just looked at it quickly, you might think you were getting a book that's going to tell me how to time the market. Uh, but that's not what this book does. So my question is, what, what is the message, the fundamental message of the book, number one, and what is fundamentally the worst mistake that smart but maybe not professional investors make with respect to mastering the market cycles? Well, look, you could go out and you could buy every security and you could hold it all the time and you would be guaranteed to have average results. And the question is, would you like to improve upon that? Not many people do that. In order to improve upon that, there are two things you can do. You can try to have better selection, that is, buy more of the things that do better and less of the things that do worse. Or you can try to have better cycle positioning, which is to say, have, be more fully committed when things are, are uh, going to go well and uh, a lighter commitment when things are going to go poorly. The theme of the book is that we can help do the latter to, to, to help investors have better results. And uh, if we are aware of what goes on in the world, if we are aware of things, how things work, how fundamentals interact with investor psychology, then I think we can improve upon the average results. So you asked what's the biggest mistake. And the biggest mistake is uh, uh, emotionality. People get excited mm -hmm. when things are going well. We, we all like to see things go well, but when things are going well, uh, people get excited and they tend to pay more for uh, perhaps than they, than they should. Uh, so, you know, you have to realize that good news is not necessarily the same as good results. If prices are too high, then good news may produce bad results. We have to have a feeling for when the market is, is, uh, is demonstrating excesses. Uh, and we cannot succumb to our emotions and get excited and buy when things are terrific and depressed and sell when things are down.